Welcome to Starting Right on Sunday Night, a ministry of Cairo Church of God. I'm Pastor Dwayne Atkinson. Hey, we're glad you joined us. And you ever think about why does God call out to us? Well, he does. The, the Bible actually says he calls out to everybody. In Titus 2.11, for the grace of God that brings or the grace of God has appeared that offers or brings salvation to all people. God is speaking to every human being. I really believe that. But just before we begin, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace toward us. May your grace be real to those who are walking through very difficult and dark valleys as we go through life. And I pray that you would comfort them, strengthen them, stand with them. We do pray for a cure for uh, the coronavirus uh, ongoing circumstances. You're the God who heals all our diseases and redeems our lives from destruction in Psalm 103. But we pray for a cure, a solution for this issue. And I thank you, Lord, for all the people who look to you in faith and in prayer. And I pray your blessing upon this broadcast in Jesus name. Amen. Well, we are going to be looking at what does God call to us? This is Titus 2 verses 11 through 13, the New International Version. The Bible says there, for the grace of God has appeared that brings salvation to all people. That means you and me and everybody we know and everybody we don't know. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Fire Bible says this about this passage of Scripture, particularly verse 11. According to the Bible, saving grace is a gift of God that first of all causes God to make spiritual salvation available to all people. Through the sin-covering sacrifice of his Son, his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Secondly, it enables us to accept Christ by faith and enter a personal relationship with God. So the grace of God is unmerited favor or undeserved favor. Uh, we're saved by that favor, saved by uh, grace through faith in Jesus Christ. But the grace of God does a mighty work in people's hearts. That's how they come to Christ. And what does God call to everyone or call to us? And why has the grace of God appeared to all people? There has to be a reason or a purpose behind that you look at the heart of God, you can see God's heart in these Bible passages of Scripture. And I believe that this is why God calls out to us. First of all, God cares. God cared too much to leave us like we are in sin or like we were in sin. And God cares too much for us to waste our lives in this life. And people can do that, but it's not God's will. God cares, first of all, about those he calls. And when we think about those he calls, in first and second Peter 3, 9, this is the New International Version, where the Bible says, God, or the Lord, is not slow, that is Jesus here, is not slow in keeping his promise, that is, to return, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. The way to salvation is through repentance, turning from sin and turning to Christ. We do that by faith, and we're not going to be perfect at it, even on our good days, probably. God really cares about how you and I live, and God really cares about us living our lives for a purpose, on purpose, for His purpose. And the good news about this, it's not limited to uh, an age group, like from this age to this age, or how much money you have, or about what you have done or where you have been. 
But God's grace, it, it appears to every person for a purpose that they could have a changed heart and life and be with the Lord forever and eternity. Secondly, the reason God calls out to us is that he cares about lost souls. I'm so glad he cares about lost souls. I'm thankful for all the people who prayed for me before I came to Christ. I'm so thankful to, for the people who kept believing anyway when there was really no real reason for them to believe. I didn't like church. I didn't want to go to church. I didn't go to church. I was grown, okay? And they didn't go to church a whole lot when I was growing up. Uh, we just didn't. Uh, but we did go some. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to everyone. That's now all the people who are saved by grace through faith in Christ and those who haven't yet come to Christ by faith. And here's, here's the way it, we should look at it. If you're a saved person and we think about churches, if God is concerned about lost souls, don't you think you and I should be concerned about them as well? Well, that's one of the reasons we do these broadcasts, but they're watched primarily by people who are saved, I think. And, and if you're going to be concerned about lost souls, you have to do two things. You have to love what God loves. Until you love what God loves, you really uh, are not going to be exactly in the will of God like you should. And the second thing is you have to hate what God hates. We don't like to think about God hating things. We like to think about God is love. I went in the 60s, the Beatles sang, all you need is love, uh, which is not exactly the case. You do need God's love. Not, might not be the kind of love they were saying about. And as a matter of fact, in Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19, this is a Passion New Translation. And this is what it says there about what God hates. There are six evils God truly hates, and a seventh that is an abomination to him. And one version says is uh, detestable to him. Putting, uh, uh, putting others down while considering yourself superior, an arrogant attitude, an attitude of arrogance is what that is. Spreading lies and rumors, spilling the blood of the innocent, plotting evil in your heart toward another, gloating over what's plainly going wrong, spouting lies and false testimonies, and stirring up strife between friends, some versions say families. Uh, these are entirely despicable to God. So there are some things that God actually hates. We don't need to be involved in these things. God wants all of us to live for, for him now and in eternity. And the third thing is this. God calls us because he really does love us. And, and he knows our frailties. He knows that we're limited. But he also knows that you and I can be transformed by the grace of God through faith in Christ. And God calls to us because he knows we all need lifting up. You need encouragement? We all need encouragement at times. And encouragement is sometimes or maybe often the difference in moving forward instead of feeling hopeless. But people can keep serving God in either condition, and I have, and others have, and you can too. Keep moving forward, even if you don't particularly feel like it. Some days you might not feel like it. Do you live by your feelings, or do you live by faith? The Lord has a history of encouraging his people. The Apostle Paul was in chains and headed into a guaranteed sheep shipwreck in the book of Acts. And in then he stands up eventually and says, an angel of the God whom I serve stood with me. It was encouraging. He came to encourage Paul. And then Paul encouraged everybody on that ship before the ship wrecked. And what did Jesus say so many times? Be of good cheer in the King James Version. Be encouraged in other versions. Take heart in other versions. How about you today? Do you need to take heart? Do you need to be encouraged? Do you need to be of good cheer? Well, I hope you'll accept this as the Lord speaking to you through his word. The Lord calls out to us because we all need lifting up from time to time. One of my favorite verses, one verse in the Bible, an odd verse, is Psalm 33. And the psalmist was surrounded by enemies and difficulties and opposition and uncertainty. 
and he, and he writes in the King James Version, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me by glory and the lifter up of mine head. God is able to lift you up. In 1 Peter chapter 2, 9, the Bible talks about the fact that, that we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a, a holy nation, God's special possession or God's peculiar people, but special possession might be better, unique word I like. And this is why, that you may declare the praises of him, that is God, who called you, you got the call of God, God's calling out to us, who called you out of darkness, out of sin, into his marvelous light. And today, may he be the lifter up of your head as well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this broadcast. Thank you for a word from heaven. And I pray that you would speak encouragement to those who need it, strength to those who need it, healing to those who need it. And we look to you by faith, casting all our care upon you as in 1 Peter 5, 7. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. We're here Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. And then Sunday evenings, we're starting right on Sunday night at 6 p.m. And Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Uh, on Facebook and YouTube. Hope you'll join us for all of those. God bless you and have a blessed rest of the week in Jesus' name.